Hello and welcome to Music Is Your Friend. This is another short video about Megan Trainer's new EP called The Love Train. Boom! I don't really like this EP. In fact, I believe that even Megan doesn't know where she's going with her career. She's doing good. She was a judge on that show, you know, has all about the bass and, you know, has a whole bunch of other songs. And yeah, she's kind of going up the ranks, but I think that she kind of doesn't know where she wants to be with her career. It's obvious, you know, that she has a good voice. It's obvious that she knows how to sing. It's obvious that she's influenced by all these like different musicians, you know, from like Frank Sinatra and just like classic songwriting, doo-wop, R&B, to just like regular pop. And you can hear all of her influences on this EP, which is not necessarily a good thing. Sure, it's fine. I even encourage diversity, you know, within an album or an EP, but just not this kind of diversity. And I feel that the producer is also kind of here to blame because you just can't force like a old school, almost like classical writing style slash country kind of a song to be a pop dance floor hit. It just doesn't work. It's obvious that Megan Trainor's strongest weapon is her voice. Sadly, it actually doesn't shine in these songs. Okay, you can hear it here and there, but, but the producer always just buries her underneath these, like, you know, doo-wop backing vocals. The voice is like floating in the effects. It just sounds unnatural. And that's basically downplaying your strongest weapon. It doesn't make any sense. I like the cover for this album though. So if you look at the covers for her first two albums, it's just like her in a something like a sweater. The second one is uh, like, you know, she's standing like this. But then on this third album, she's kind of exposing herself. She's like wearing this sort of like a semi-revealing outfit and you're just thinking to yourself like girl what are you trying to prove exactly maybe it's just one of these like crazy things of the 21st century like i don't know microaggressions or like fat shaming or something like that but it just doesn't make any sense not everything has to be all about the bass you could actually you know use some low middle or high middle or treble these are all legitimate frequencies that actually sound good and you can see her breasts and the album's name is like treat myself treat yourself with what so on this six song ep you have songs of kind of all styles but they're not actually most of the songs there are kind of written in one style but then they kind of wanted to make a dance floor anthem out of it and then they put like you know some like really like deep bass on it just doesn't make any sense they're basically ruining songs that way and there's another thing that really bothers me about this ep she just never shuts up like there's no music playing without her singing over it it's just constant vocals it's boring the song never kind of breathes the vocals are just constantly attacking you you know with backing vocals and more vocals and more vocals and more lyrics and repeat the chorus once more i actually wouldn't advise you to listen to this cp but if you have to listen to this album listen to these two songs because the rest of them are kind of ah uh, not that good one of them is called marry me and it's a really happy song you know played with the ukulele i just I just seriously dislike ukulele, but at least you can kind of hear her voice there. And probably the best song on the album is a song called After You. That song almost sounds like a classic country song. And you can also hear her voice better on that song than on some other song that has a stupid electronica drum beat laid underneath the goddamn song. This music is kind of lost, Megan is kind of lost. And this producer is definitely lost. Leave your comments in the section below and subscribe to my channel.